The Murder of Kate Bushell One Saturday evening in 1997, 14-year-old Kate Bushell went out for her usual walk with a neighbour's dog in Exeter, Devon. But when she did not return, her parents began to grow worried but could never have guessed how serious the situation actually was. That was until Kate's own father discovered his daughter lying dead on the ground just 10 minutes from their home. And to this day, Kate's killer has never been identified. Kate Bushell, a bright and popular girl, lived in Barreta Drive, Exwick, with her slightly older brother Tim and their parents, Suzanne and Jerry. Kate put lots of effort into her studies and at a very early age had aspirations to go to Oxford University. She loved playing basketball and was also extremely musical and played several instruments. Kate could have had a bright future ahead of her, but all of that was taken away from her on Saturday, November the 15th, 1997. That day, Kate went to Exeter Library together with her mother as she needed to do some research for a school project. Afterwards, Kate and Suzanne did some shopping in the Virgin Megastore. Kate bought a CD for herself and a comic book for Tim, whose birthday was coming up very soon. When the mother and daughter returned home that afternoon, Kate finished her homework in her bedroom before deciding that she was going to take their neighbour's dog, a Jack Russell called Gemma, out for a walk. Gemma's owners, Stuart and Alison Smith, were away on holiday and Kate loved helping them with the dog. It was around 4.30pm when Kate set off to walk down the road to the Smith's residence to get Gemma. The two then walked along Barreta Drive heading towards Exwick Lane. At 5pm, Jerry and Suzanne noticed it was taking Kate longer than usual to return home. Normally, the walk lasted around 20 minutes or so. The time kept passing by, and as there were still no signs of Kate by 6.45pm, Jerry decided to go out to look for her. After the first brief, unsuccessful search, Jerry returned home and contacted the police to report Kate as missing. Afterward, Suzanne remained at home, just in case Kate decided to come back. But Jerry couldn't sit and wait, so he decided to follow the usual route he thought Kate might have taken along Barreta Drive and then through to Exwick Lane. In the darkness, with a torch in his hand, Jerry climbed over the stile from Exwick Lane into the field around 7.35pm and that's when the torch beam reflected off the eyes of a dog. It was Gemma. Then, just a moment later, Jerry saw something lying on the ground. His 14-year-old daughter was lying on her back in the field. Her joggers were pulled to her knees and she had a brutal wound on her throat. Somebody had attacked Kate just yards from her home. A murder inquiry was launched immediately, with the police believing whoever had did this to Kate was local or had lived in the area before due to the rural location of the crime scene. Approximately a hundred people a day used the same walkway Kate had been going along before her death. So the police thought there was a high chance somebody had seen something. Indeed, soon enough, witnesses came forward stating they had seen Kate and Gemma walking down Exwick Lane at around 4.50pm. They also noticed a blue car or van and two men being near the lay-by. One of the men was described as being between 30 and 40 years old, with an average build and height, clean-shaven and with dark collar-length hair. The witnesses also said that when they passed the location again five minutes later, Kate was not there anymore and the blue van appeared unattended. To this day, the police have been unable to trace that vehicle. Two more witnesses 
separately saw a man running from the direction of the field where Kate's body was later found between 5.10 and 5.40 p.m. The police said he appeared to be running out of control and very fast down the muddy, slippery hill before turning back into the estate. He wasn't wearing a normal running kit and was in an area at a time of night that you wouldn't expect a jogger to be. It suggests a local connection. Did someone come back home dishevelled, muddied, possibly bloodied, or out of breath? Did they dispose of clothing? We need someone to tell us who he is. Unfortunately, the identity of this man also remains a mystery. When Kate's body was examined, they found no signs of sexual assault, but they did find unusual clothing fibres made of a bright orange dyed material predominantly used in non-fluorescent workwear such as boiler suits, aprons and gloves all over her body and also the crime scene. These fibres could not have come from Kate's home and were almost certainly deposited by the offender. Additionally, it is believed Kate's throat was slit with a six-inch kitchen-type knife with a smooth blade by a single ferocious movement. Still, despite the witnesses and pieces of evidence, Operation Deakin, one of the biggest ever murder investigations conducted by Devon and Cornwall Police, has never been able to find out who killed Kate. More than 5,000 DNA samples have been taken. 2,000 blue vehicles have been traced and eliminated. 5,000 house-to-house interviews have been conducted and three suspects have been interviewed and released. But still, there are no answers. Retired Detective Superintendent Paul Bergan has commented on the difficulties solving this case. Any murder investigation is like trying to piece together a huge jigsaw. We're still missing that one piece of this jigsaw. I'm convinced that somebody out there has got that relevant information. Please come forward and give us that vital breakthrough. Kate's brother Tim, who was 15 years old at the time of his sister's death, has also said, My parents and I still hope that someone will come forward and that justice will be served. A £10,000 reward has been offered by the independent charity Crime Stoppers for information leading to the arrest and conviction of Kate's killer. Phone the incident room on 08 96 1233. We'll be right back.